Hi, I'm Marissa, Chief Entomologist at the Butterfly Biosphere at Thanksgiving Point. Today is a very exciting day because we've just received a shipment of beetles and we want to share the joy of unboxing them with you. It's Beetlemania! So this shipment is only available to us twice a year from expert breeders in Taiwan. So this is when we order our big showstopper beetles or species that we don't breed. So before we get to them, let's do a quick review of the beetle life cycle and look at a couple beetles that we do breed here. So we're standing in front of our sun beetle exhibit. These are native to central and western Africa. They live in forested type of habitats. They, as you can see from their exhibit, like to feed on rotting fruits and they'll also feed on nectar and pollen. Flower beetles are part of the subfamily Cetiniani and they're also called flower chafers. We actually have some species here in Utah. Look for something called the bumble flower beetle. They're very fuzzy and cute. Our entomology department breeds three species of flower beetles here. Uh, we love them because they can be exhibited in a group setting. Uh, if you take a closer look at these, you can see that they like to wrestle each other for the highest points in their exhibit or they have love triangles happening as they compete for females. But they're not equipped with horns or other features that can injure each other. So we can have quite a large group of these beetles in here and they're really fun to watch as they accumulate on their fruit. You can see their little paintbrush like mouth parts lapping at the fruit. So while the males are competing for territory and other females, the females are digging into the soil to lay eggs. And when those eggs hatch, they are grubs. So kind of like the way butterflies are a soft-bodied chrysalis when they're juveniles, beetles are a soft-bodied grub when they are juveniles. So let's take a look in the stir. They actually live underground as they're developing. So these grubs are decomposers. So you can see that this bin is full of rotting leaves um, and that's what these grubs will eat. And when they poop, this is basically releasing these leaf, the nutrients from this organic material back into the ecosystem so plants can uptake it and grow and, and start that cycle of nutrients through the ecosystem again. So grubs go through complete metamorphosis just like butterflies do. So their grubs will eventually pupate, which is the phase in which they go through metamorphosis. Uh, and when they're finished with that, they come out as a hardened beetle. Um, we actually have an adult in here. I'm going to put it in a cup to, for safekeeping because these are excellent flyers. It could just slide a pair of wings out from under that shell and take off at any second. So I'm going to put it away while we talk about these. So you may have noticed a couple different sizes of grubs in here. They will molt twice, so they'll be like small, medium, and large grubs. So once they reach their maximum grub size, they're gonna wiggle around in the dirt and use their head and their spit to create this hardened chamber of dirt. So this is similar to when moths make cocoons. It's like a shield to protect them and it also keeps the environmental conditions inside of this chamber at really particular levels. And so once this chamber is done, it will shed its last grub skin and become a pupa. So it kind of looks like an alien in here, but we can see that there are legs and we can see its face. This is the abdominal side of this individual. And so for a couple of weeks or maybe a few months, depending on the species of beetle, it will be undergoing metamorphosis. Once it's complete, it will shed that pupa skin and emerge as a beetle and it's actually gonna hang out in this chamber for another week or two just to make sure that its shell is completely hardened. Because when our insects are shedding their exoskeleton, they're very soft when they go through that process. They have to fit out of all kinds of jointed legs and they have special uh, appendages like wings with weird shapes. So it wants to make sure it's completely hardened and ready to function. Um, and then it'll break out of this chamber just like this other adult that we found on the surface. It's ready to go. So for those flower beetles, it might take them anywhere from six to 10 months to go from egg to adult. And then the adult beetles will live for a couple of months. Uh, for some of our other beetles that we raise uh, in the subfamily Dynastini, it might take them two to three years to reach adulthood. So that's part of why we're getting our shipment today is because it takes them so long to grow up um, and have us be able to exhibit them for you. Okay, so the first species that we're unpacking, this is the Hercules beetle. 
native to South America. And they're probably named after their enormous size and strength. Take a look at these huge hooks and spines on the legs of this male beetle. So he's gonna use these to give him extra grip on the branches of trees so that when he's wrestling another male for the affections of a female, he can hold on very tightly to the branch so he's not thrown out of the tree. Now I also have a female of this species on my hand. So you can see she doesn't have these large horns that the male has. She's also a much smaller size. So we call this sexual dimorphism, when in the same species, the male and the female exhibit different coloration or different sizes or even different physical characteristics. So this is a pair that we're hoping to breed. So I've got a tank here set up for them with some special substrate. This is a mix of compost soil and rotting wood and a little bit of leaf litter. Um, and that is what the grubs will eat since they are decomposers as well. So I wanna point out something cool about the elytra of beetles. The elytra are just the front pair of wings on beetles that have been modified to be hardened shell to protect the flying wings underneath. Um, a lot of times when, it's, uh, when the beetle's in a very humid environment, it can turn dark black or make the normal coloration darker. Um, and we can see the longer that this male is out of his shipping container where he had those wet paper towels, the more of this olive green coloration that's becoming visible on his elytra. Okay, so the next beetle that we are unboxing is an elephant beetle. So these beetles are named for this horn right on the tip of their nose that's kind of shaped like an elephant's trunk. Um, they have this beautiful tan golden velvet on their shells. This is a very soft beetle to pet. He's also native to South America and you can see he's got these long arms with those sharp hooks as well. So he competes for females similar to the way that the Hercules beetle does. So you may have met our hissing cockroaches before which push air out of their sides to create a hissing noise. This beetle, when he's angry, like when I'm petting him, is actually rubbing his wings underneath the elytra. That's what's creating the noise he's making right now. So our next beetle that we're opening is the giant stag beetle. These are native to Southeastern Asia. And I'm gonna be very careful with them because stag beetles are known for their giant mandibles, which look and function similarly to the antlers of deer or stags um, and they use these to compete for the attention of female beetles so i'm going to make sure i'm not putting my fingers anywhere in this space and then touching him <laughs> but he's a pretty large black beetle and i just want to showcase the size difference of the male and the females of this species. So again, we're seeing sexual dimorphism. Look how tiny this female is compared to our male that's on my finger. Please don't bite me. So this is a beetle species we've never bred before. Um, so we're going to, going to attempt to breed this pair. So I have their enclosure set up. You can see it's again filled with compost, um, a lot of rotten wood, some leaf litter, and we actually have some chunks of wood in here as well because that's what their grubs will feed on. They are decaying fallen trees in the forest. So the next beetle that we're unboxing are our rainbow stag beetles. So just like our giant stag, these have large mandibles that they use for fighting other males for females. And I've already put our females into this breeding enclosure. So they've got plenty of appropriate substrate for laying eggs. So I'm gonna put him in there. He's got access to two females, lucky guy. He's a beautiful green color. But I wanna show you our other male who also has a little bit of maroon in there. And these rainbow stag beetles are native to Australia and New Guinea. Okay, I've saved our best for last. These are super unique. Um, they're not very common in the beetle trade. 
from what I've seen. Uh, these are long-armed scarabs, and I think it's pretty obvious why they're called that. So we're again seeing some sexual dimorphism here. Smaller female, and she also doesn't have these characteristic long arms. And I'm assuming he uses these somehow to compete for females. Maybe he slaps other males in the face. Maybe he wrestles other males. I don't know, what do you think? That, that might be something for us to do some research on or, or find a way to, to test our hypotheses. So what's really interesting is you can see she's got the last three segments of her antenna spread open for maximum chemical absorption. She's really trying to get information about the environment that she's in right now. While his are tucked tight, um, and he's a little bit angry with me, he's huffing, he's, he's you know vibrating his wings against his abdomen. Um, and those three antennal segments on the tips are closed up right now so he can protect them. Well, thanks so much for joining us as we welcome our new beetles to the butterfly biosphere. Make sure you look for them the next time you visit out on exhibit. Uh, if you like this video, uh, go ahead and like it and subscribe so that you can see more like it. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, leave them in the comment section below. In fact, we want to hear from you which of these beetles that we met today was your favorite. And then finally, go ahead and share the video so your friends can join us in our beetle mania. See you next time. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's so cute! He's just so cute!